this video, we're going to make a flex box nav. And I actually think that building navigations is uh, one of the most common and probably best use cases for actually using Flexbox. So this is essentially what we were going to be building here. It's just a uh, standard uh, navigation. So I've got a nav tag inside of that. I have an unordered list and then a whole bunch of uh, list items. The really only different thing being that uh, these social icons are going to have a class of social on them so that we can uh, make them a little bit smaller. So it, that's how it's going to look on desktop. And when we go down to uh, a bit of a smaller screen, I'm going to make each one of them 50% wide, but the social ones 25% uh, wide. And then finally, when we get down to about 500 pixels, we're going to stack these ones while leaving these ones to be 25% uh, wide. Now, uh, the kind of beauty of a flex nav is that you don't need to go ahead and figure out the proportions. A lot of times if you're doing this with floats, you'd have to figure out, okay, there's six items plus four small ones, plus however much padding or margin that you need to use. And we'll figure it all out from there. Uh, you don't have to do any math here. And if you were to add one, so if I were to add like a, a new item to the list and refresh, you'll see that the new item just slots itself perfectly in amongst the other ones. We didn't have to do any resizing of widths or do any sort of math. Similarly, if I go ahead and take out maybe let's see two of these items and give it a refresh, it's extremely flexible. You get the point, right? You can just throw a whole bunch of elements at it, tell them how much of the extra space they should eat up. In this case, it's a lot more than uh, these ones and it'll all just figure it on out. You never have to worry about adding up to 100% wide. So I'm going to bring that back to item three. And I'm going to go and swap this out to swell the start. That's what I'm going to be working from. Uh, and let's just take a quick look at the sort of the starting CSS that we've got here. Um, I've just got my HTML, set up my border box. Um, I've got some basic styling here. Again, this stuff doesn't have anything to do with Flexbox. It's just so that the demo looks nice. Um, wrapper, that has nothing to do. I just kind of constrained the width of this navigation. So there's a wrapper around this. And then finally, here's where we're actually going to get started. We got uh, the flex nav, which is this nav thing here. And then we've got a UL and an LI. So what is going to be the flex container? It's not the flex nav. It's going to be the UL that actually is the flex container. And then the LIs are going to be the flex items in our case. So we gone ahead and selected that in the way we, uh, well, let's first see where we're at. Actually, this is kind of the default. Um, they all just stack vertically right on top of each other. We can go ahead and say display flex and give that a save. And you'll see that the items go from stacked on top of each other to display flex, which is they will just take up the exact amount of room that they need. There's a little bit of padding on them, but uh, other than that, that's as much space. So we've got all this extra space on the right hand side here. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to uh, work with it? So let's actually just go ahead and select each individual flex item. So I'm going to say flex nav li because the li's are the flex items. And we will say, let's just try flex one. Um, and from a previous video, we learned if you set something to flex one, what does it do? It sets the flex grow, which is how is this extra space allotted between all of the items, as well as the flesh flex shrink when you don't have enough space for all the items, how do you mix it or how do you divide it on up? So set it to flex one, refresh. And what do we got here? Looks like all of them have the exact same space. So that doesn't work extremely well because these social icons right here, they don't really need that much space. And these items here, they probably do need the, that amount of space um, because they are uh, a little bit longer in the text that they have. So what we want to do is select the individual ones, which we say flex nav uh, dot social. And the reason I'm doing that, if we look at the index HTML, we've got these list items with the class of social on it. And we're going to make those ones a little bit different than the other one. So uh, there, I'm actually going to set these ones to flex one. And I'm going to go up to this regular one and set them to flex three. The reason I'm going to do that because I want the regular flex. I want these item flex items to take three times the amount of the extra space 
as the social ones because it, really they don't need any of the extra space. So I'm going to say that you take three times the amount of the social. Um, it's worth noting that this flex three is applying to all of them. And then this dot social is going to overwrite it for these four social icons. So give that a refresh and you'll see that right away. We've got these ones being a little bit smaller and then these ones uh, off to races. So that's, that's it. That's one, two, three lines of CSS to get yourself a really nice flex box nav. It's a hell of a lot easier than using uh, something like floats and using your percentages to, to figure out how much space they should take up. Now we want to talk about mobile. Uh, we want it to, we kind of have two stages here. As, as soon as we hit a thousand pixels, uh, I want them to stack one or two in a row. And then I want to put these four all along the bottom. So uh, what we need to go ahead first to do is if we want them to, you see if we go really, really small here, they're just going to run into each other. So what do we actually need for that to work is wrapping. We need to turn on wrapping. You might think, oh, we need to change it from row to column. And that's a pretty good hypothesis. We could go ahead and say flex nav UL, flex direction, column, and give it a refresh. When we hit that thousand pixel breakpoint, let's see what goes on here. Oh, see, they just stack vertically. And in many situations, that would actually be totally acceptable. But the problem is that we don't want them to go just stacked just yet, or maybe not at all. We want one, two, three, four, five, six. And then when we get down to these social icons, we want four of them to be. So we actually need to keep it in row, which is the default. So we're not going to put that there. What we actually want to turn on is the flex wrap. So we'll say flex wrap wrap and refresh. Now we'll hit that thousand pixel breakpoint and nothing's happening. How come they aren't wrapping? And for something to be able to wrap, we actually need to give it some sort of width. And the way that we are going to do that is with the flex basis property. So we'll go ahead and select each of our items. We'll say uh, flex dash nav li. And I'm just going to do them all right now. And then we'll go and fix the, the social ones in a second. Uh, so we'll say flex nav and flex. We're going to use the shorthand property because we want them to grow at one. We want it to take evenly take the extra space. We want it to shrink at one. We want them to divvy up uh, or we want to chisel off the extra space evenly. And then we want to set it to 50% because we want them to be 50% wide and right next to each other. So go ahead and give that a save refresh. Let's hit that thousand pixel breakpoint and perfect. Look what we got going on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then <laughs> what's going on here. This is kind of pretty classic of Flexbox is that when something goes wrong, when you have like conflicting properties, it all just kind of pukes it up onto the screen. Um, but the reason that is there is because we still have this social one probably overwriting it. And the way that we can sort of debug that is if you open up your dev tools and ins just inspect one of them. Uh, here, let me bring this down to the bottom here. And I'm just going to click on one of the social ones. You'll see that this is our flex property that we just wrote inside of the media query, one, one fifty percent. However, this flex one is overriding it. And that means that there is no flex basis actually being applied. So we need to uh, specify a flex basis on that one. So I'll just say flex nav li or just even just dot social will do be enough. You never want to over qualify your selectors too much. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues down the, the road. And we'll say flex one. 1 and 25% what that will give us now is oh nicely spaced out uh, different icons so that can kind of go on down the last thing we want to do is once we hit the let's say 500 pixel breakpoint and I know this can be any breakpoint that you want um, but we just want to then change this flex basis one more time uh, and to be able to to stack just one by one by one so uh, we say dot flex nav li inside of there. And I don't have to say flex one, one, a hundred percent again, just because like we've done that already. We can just say flex basis right all together and say a hundred percent. And that's just going to override this part and the flex grow and the flex shrink of the previous one is going to stick around. So give that a save refresh. 
Now we'll go down, down to two, and then we hit that 500 pixel breakpoint, and they'll stack. Um, these ones are small enough that they can say uh, they can stay four to a row as long as we want. So that's a very simple uh, flexbox nav. Um, definitely really nice and easy. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at how do you write a little toggle nav that will toggle that up and down, um, as well as how do we order different elements on our page differently when they're on mobile versus something like desktop. I'll see you in that video. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.